Okay, in this video, we are um, we're, we have our our um, one part mold here, and um, we're going to start pouring some cups. And so I'm going to walk you through a couple of things to think about here. Um, first, you want to make sure that you um, have your casting slip mixed up really well. Um, as it sits for a little while, you'll see it'll kind of start to stiffen at the top. So just make sure you have your, your slip. And then the other thing that I do is um, I try to keep the side of this bucket, you know, as clean as you can. Because what you don't want is you don't want things, um, you know, little little bits of the slip uh, drying on the side of the bucket and then falling in to the bucket. So I try to keep that uh, as clean as possible. And um, okay, so now that I have this stirred up, I'm going to um, pour the casting slip into both of these. And what you want to do is you want to try to make sure that you can pour it in one go so you don't want to have to stop and refill in the middle of the pour because then you'll get a line, you know, wherever you stop on your mold. So what I like to do is have a sponge handy. I'm going to get a full scoop of this and then I'm just going to um, kind of take the sponge and kind of clean the, the sides up a little bit so it doesn't drip as much. You know, the cleaner that you can be with this, the easier. And um, so I'm just gonna kind of pour this all the way in. And now as soon as I said that, I'm dripping across the back. <laughs> um, and what I'm gonna wanna do here is I wanna pour this right up to the top. I wanna, um, you know, I, I wanna try to get it as close to the top without going over as I can. You know, just like that, okay? Now that level will, will sink a little bit as I as I wait here. So I'm gonna then try to, um, or I'm gonna get another scoop here, and um, then I'll pour this one here. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bring this right up here to the top and try not to go over. Um, so then I will empty this, set this aside, and um, now I'm gonna wait 10 minutes uh, for both of these. So I'm gonna set this timer um, and uh, I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. And then um, while I am waiting for that, um, the layer is gonna go down a little bit. Sometimes you have to top this off a little bit, um, but in these particular ones, I haven't been ha having to do that. But um, so uh, we'll stop the camera here and then we'll come back in 10 minutes. Okay, so now uh, these two um, molds have been sitting with a slip inside of them for 10 minutes. And what's happening is, is that the plaster is, uh, is absorbing moisture. And so what that does is it sort of wicks um, the moisture to the edge of this, uh, of the cup that's in there and is um, you know, creating a thickness here that you can kind of see the thickness of the vessel. Now, the longer you leave it in there, the thicker it's going to be. And so you might find that after 10 minutes, your particular mold might be too thick or too thin. And um, also that time will change as the mold um, you know, gets really saturated with, with moisture. Um, really, when you're casting like this, you're, it, you know, it's pretty good if you can get maybe three to four casts a day. And so, and then overnight, you might want to let it dry out, you know, just uncovered or put a fan in front of it or something. So, so now that we have a good thickness here, I can kind of see this, um, you know, the edge here on both of these. Now it's time to pour them out. So I have my, my slip here, my casting slip. And um, what I want to do is I want to have some two little pieces of wood that I'm going to put here. You want to make sure that uh, you don't have any drips of the plaster or the, um, uh, the casting slip from the last time you did this because uh, you don't want to have uh, little chunks of dried uh, casting slip fall into your your nice casting slip that you have already mixed here. And so what you want to do is kind of space them apart like that. Now when I pour these I'm going to do something a little unusual and, and I'm going to roll the, the mold so that it pours out over the whole surface here. Um, usually you can just pour it out of one side um, but what I'm with these particular cups I'm finding that it's working pretty well to do that because then I'll I'll take a rubber rib and I'll just kind of 
um, cut off the top of the of the cup and I'll do that in the next video um, so just keep in mind that you don't always roll it like I'm gonna do this here but um, so generally what you want to do is just like what happens is when you pour this out you know all the wet slip from the inside pours out and the, the vessel is then kind of stuck to the side of the of the plaster so okay so now I'm gonna want to set this in here so that it can just drip and I'm gonna leave it um, I'm gonna leave it like this for um, you know probably 15 20 minutes even um, to make sure everything is dripped out and um, then I'll flip it upside down and I'll show you how to cut off the rest of it so so now I have my other one here I also want to try to get this loose stuff off the edge here you know basically you just don't want any of that stuff falling in there uh, into the slip so here you can kind of see also um, you know a little bit more defined here the rim here Okay, so now that that's done, um, I'm gonna let that sit and make sure that all the drips are out. If I take it out too early, it'll flow back down into the foot and it'll make the foot really thick. Um, also, if I take it, if I flip it over too early, um, I'm gonna see drip lines on the inside of the vessel. So, you know, right here on this, if I flip the mold over, then it's gonna start dripping back down and I'm gonna see these lines down here. And so that's what I don't wanna see. So that's why I'm gonna leave it upside down so long. Um, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let those drips almost start to get leather, a little bit leather hard on the, on the bottom here. So, um, so th that's it for pouring it out. And uh, just make sure, again, just make sure that your sticks are clean here. Um, you know, and then um, if you do splash any up on the edge here, when you take these off, that's when I would clean this out, the, the side of the bucket again, so that I don't have any dry, um, you know, dry casting slip on the edge of the bucket. So uh, that's it for this video. And then when we come back, I'll cut the tops off. Okay, in this video, uh, I'm gonna um, take the, pick these up and I'll show you how to cut the tops off of them. They've been sitting there for upside down like this over the bucket for about 20 minutes. Again, that's a little longer than is necessary, but I wanna make sure that the uh, slip doesn't drip back down. Um, and also, uh, I wanted to make sure that the top is uh, stiff enough where I can cut through it with this. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is carefully pick these up and then you'll see all of the drips here which I'll, I'll cut off here in a second. And so um, pick that one up, set it over here. I'm gonna take these up and set them to the side. At this point, I'm gonna just kind of wipe down the inside of the bucket here and try to get kind of close to the surface of the slip. Um, so I make sure that everything is wet here and I'm not getting uh, any chunks that are falling in. Then I'll um, put the lid back on and I'm just gonna kind of roll this over to the side. And um, so now I have, um, I have these cups here, and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, rubber rib here. This is a really flexible um, rib from Mud Tools. Um, the reason why I wanna use this as opposed to a fettling knife is that the fettling knife uh, could damage the, the top of the mold. And, um, and since the top of the mold dictates that line, it would change the way that the, the, the finished cup looks. Um, plus it, it could dig into the plaster and chip off little pieces of it. Then the chip plaster gets into, uh, you know, into my cup. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kind of just hold this at an angle and I'm just gonna cut in like that and, um, and just sort of slowly kind of go around and um, you can kind of see what that does is that it makes a really nice sharp line. There you can also see the thickness of the vessel. Now it's gonna be a little bit thicker right on the rim there than the rest of it, but, um, but that's a pretty good thickness here. And so I'm just gonna kind of go around and uh, clean all this up. Now I'm going to, um, you know, eventually I'm gonna clean up the, the, the rim anyway with a, with a soft sponge. Um, so I don't, I'm not too concerned with these little burrs right here. 
uh, mainly just trying to want to, you know, I'm trying to get a nice good cut there and um, make sure that I'm not, um, you know, peeling off the cert the the object from the from the uh, mold. Okay, so that's that one, and then uh, let's cut this one off. The inside of the cup is still pretty wet right now, so I am trying to be careful not to drop any of the little pieces, and that's why I'm I'm taking all the little pieces off over here. So. Okay, so, um, so now we have our, our two cups. There are a couple little tiny pinholes, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just um, take a little tiny bit of slip on the brush and I'm just gonna dot it on the edge there. Um, and then otherwise, then what I need to do is now I wanna let this sit, um, you know, and this part really varies depending on how dry your, your molds are. Um, and what, I, what I'm looking for is I, I will look for the edge to start to separate here so that the cup on the inside is shrinking from the mold. Um, now, this it, it depends a lot on the mold, how thick it is, how dry it is, how many times you've cast that day. Um, off the top of my head, I'm guessing this will be about a half an hour to 45 minutes. Um, could be longer because this is I've done several casts on this t this object today um, But what we'll do is uh, I'll stop the camera and then we'll come back when that is separated and we can pull the pull the objects out so um, Main thing with this part of it is just to make sure you use something soft to cut that surface off Do not use anything hard like a fettling knife because it's it will very easily chip that surface and cut into it so um I think that's it for this video. Okay, so now we have our our two molds here. And um, in the last segment, I said that I thought it was gonna be about 30 or 45 minutes. And it turned out it was much longer. It was about an hour and a half. Now, um, I did mention that that time, uh, you know, that 30, 45 minutes does change depending on you know how thick your mold is but also um, how saturated the mold is so these same objects were taking 30 to 45 minutes earlier in the day and now they just took an hour and a half so what you're looking for is you're looking for there to be separation um, all the way around uh, from the mold and so each of my objects here has separation um, you know starting to shrink away and so um, that's what you're looking for um, the way to do this to take them out is um, can be a little challenging. You kind of um, have to practice a little bit, but um, you know, basically what you're going to do is flip this upside down, and you're going to um, put your hand on the inside of the cup and kind of jiggle it just a little bit, and it, and if it's ready to come out, it should just drop right out. Um, now, this is a, a good example of uh, the importance of not making your mold too heavy or ex you know too big. Um, you know, so if I can hold this, it's much easier. You know, if I can hold this in one hand, it's much easier for me to get this cup out. So, um, so I'll try to kind of turn over here so you can see a little bit. I'm gonna put my hand on the inside and I'm gonna kind of just sort of wiggle this just a little bit and then really carefully just pull that cup out. And so now you can see the, um, you know, these are the lines from the 3D print. Um, and so I might smooth those out a little bit, but um, I do sort of like the, the quality of those lines. Now, the rim is, um, you know, it still needs to be touched up, but when they come out of the mold, they're gonna be a little bit too soft to handle too much. So what I do is I, I will fix something major that's on the rim, but I will let this sit for, you know, another 45 minutes to an hour. Um, before I go around and, and clean up the, the rim here. And I'll, I'll make another uh, video, a uh, little segment with that. So, so now I have that one out. Let me just try to take this other one out. I'm gonna put my hand in here and kinda move that. And you can see the inside of the mold is clean. And um, you know, before I cast the next one, I'll clean up this edge here. Um, but here you can see you know, the, the detail in this one. You know, so um, for now, don't worry about this kind of stuff here. Um, 
you know, if I tried to clean that up now, I would likely deform this. You can kind of see it's really, it's actually soft enough where it's just deforming on its own weight for me holding it. So, so they're too wet right now to, to do the final cleanup. Um, but, you know, so that was the, I guess a third of the fourth cast from this object today. I think that's good for today if it's showing me that it's been three times as long sitting in the mold. Um, then these molds are saturated and they really should dry um, overnight. So I'll wait to cast those again tomorrow. So, um, but again, just make sure that you um, see that they're separating from the edge. If you have to feel like you're pulling on the cup to get it out of the mold and it's not ready, just, you know, if you, if you have made your mold or your object correctly and made your mold correctly, it should just separate on its own. You shouldn't need to, you know, um, you know, push it or pull it or anything like that. Um, so just remember that every time you are doing that, you're pulling it or anything, you're, you're, um, you know, change it, you know, you're, you're likely to damage the edge or the rim of the cup. Um, and also remember that porcelain cast, uh, slip cast porcelain has a, a really big, uh, plastic memory. So if you kind of move it and manipulate the shape of this, uh, very often when it fires, it, 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 can, it will go back into that shape. So, um, so just try to keep it, keep the shape as, as, you know, as, as, um, uh, as, as perfect as you can. Um, and that's another reason why I'm going to wait until these are a little bit more stiff to clean the rims up. So, uh, I think that's it for this video. Okay, so, um, what I'd like to talk to you about in this quick video is, uh, just, um, a, a few pointers about cleaning up the rims. So this is the cast that came out of this mold here. And um, there's a few little things that I would touch up, some imperfections right there. But the main thing is the, the rim here. So you can kind of see, you know, the rim still has the marks from when I cut off the extra casting slip. And so what I'm gonna do here is I have a little thing of water here. I have a, um, a natural sponge, which is uh, much smoother and easier to work with than, um, than these. These will work, uh, but they're just a little rougher, so they, they, they do leave a little bit of texture. Uh, and you can also use a chamois if you're working on the rim too. So what you wanna do is um, try to get this at uh, kind of just shy of leather hard, you know, um, just enough where you can kind of hold it without um, you know, bending the, mold, the the mug or anything. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of go around and work on this, um, on this rim here. Now, if you take care when you're pouring, so that's one of the reasons why when you pour these, you wanna get it right up to the edge there. Um, you know, if you take care in uh, making sure that you have a good pour and um, that when you pour it out, um, you know, you, you're doing a good job in terms of keeping it clean, then you, sometimes you don't have to do very much here with this, you know, so this is a good example of one that is already pretty good. Um, but I just want to clean up, I want to soften those edges. You know, if I don't do this, those really sharp edges can, um, can be extra sharp after the glaze, you know, if the glaze kind of splits a little bit around that rim, you know, you want that to be uh, soft and, um, you know, not too sharp. And um, so, you know, basically you just kind of keep dipping it in water and then clean up you know, anything, any of those little burrs. If you have any little hole, pinholes or anything like that, um, you can work on that at this point too. You can, a lot of times you can just kind of put a little bit of moisture on your finger and reach in there and kind of clean up, you know, anything inside that might need to, um, you know, any marks or drips or anything. You know, you see here, there's a little bit of a drip. So, you know, I could just put a little bit of moisture on that. The casting slip is actually pretty forgiving. So you can, um, uh, you know, just, just a little bit of water, uh, really, uh, rehydrates it pretty well. Um, and then I can, if I want to, I can come back here with this really soft chamois and, um, you know, just kind of run it around a few times and that'll give it a, a really nice sort of rounded, almost like a thrown rim kind of look here. Um, so, so that's what you want to do. Um, you'll do the same to the bottom if you have any any uh, marks or anything that you want to clean up on the bottom um, And then uh, you know once you do that then you're ready just to let it dry um, You know just to let it dry out in the open too. You don't need to um, Put it in a damp box or anything like that. So um, So that's it for cleaning and fine-tuning your um, Cup from your one part plaster mold